All right, on the table behind me, you see two different firearms right here, two different weapons. A, both are 223 caliber, 556, if you want to use the military designation. The one in the back is an AR-15. The one in the front here is a single shot Harrington and Richardson um, varmint gun. Essentially, it's an old gun I've had for quite a few years. And um, I'm gonna show you the difference between scoped and iron sights. And down here behind me, I have a target set up 142 yards away, which is 130 meters according to the supposed assassination attempt thing and whatever. That's the distance that the guy shot. So from this table right here that I just showed, the front, the, from this table here, the front edge of the table right there, down to the target is exactly 142 yards. I will put that picture up here to, and uh, show you that. Uh, in the range finder, you can see it. And um, before I do this video, I just want to say, uh, first and foremost, I am not a liberal Democrat, okay? I am conservative. Uh, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, but I would never uh, want him to be assassinated or anything else because that wouldn't even help the cause of liberals if he was, if you're a liberal. Assassinating your enemy is not a good idea because you make him into a martyr. So uh, this video is just intended for scientific purposes, not any kind of teaching people what to do or whatever else. Okay, let's get that out of the way. But let me show you the video proof now why 142 yard shot with iron sights and from an AR-15 would not work. Okay, right there you can see through the scope. Sorry, it's got a weird sort of a little thing there. But the camera's not quite picking it up perfectly, but you can see right there, you can see that water jug pretty clear at 142 yards. I don't have a real great setup here for my camera thing, but you can see what I'm saying there. Okay, now let's try to line up the sights here, the front blade post with the, the uh, buckets and the water jug back there can't even see it okay um, I think that illustrates my point pretty good where's it at you can see it's it should be there to the left of the that old school bus over there let me zoom in a little bit perhaps You can see making a shot with iron sights would be next to impossible. So, pretty ridiculous if you ask me. Um, I'm not a tactical sniper guy. I'm not former Secret Service or military or anything else. But I have had probably 30 years of, well, no, not 30, excuse me, I'm 49. It would be 40 years. I started hunting and things with BB guns and shooting guns when I was 9, 10 years old, somewhere in there. And so I have 40 or so years of shooting experience. And um, that has included a lot of years of hunting. And I knew how to kill. I have killed many times um, while in hunting for food. And I know the thing of where to shoot an animal, vitals. I know what happens if you don't get a good shot in. I know the thing of windage elevation, wind speeds, ranges and things. I've shot it a couple hundred yard shots before. and. And uh, I have a lot of experience in that. And that's why when I first saw this whole thing of how this assassination attempt on Trump, I thought, uh, no, uh, there's a bunch of problems there, um, which I've discussed in other videos. But, you know, let's just think about it from the standpoint of this young guy that, that supposedly did this thing. Why would you take an AR-15 with iron sights if you're going to try to assassinate a president? We'll say that's all he had. Um, or is it that that's the, me the, the weapon that the media constantly is demonizing? Oh, it's an AR-15. These AR-15s are super dangerous. Um, if I was in a situation where I had to shoot an animal from 142 yards, I wouldn't choose an AR-15 with iron sights. I would choose my, one of my varmint rifles with a nice big scope on it where I can dial everything right in and, you know, get zoomed in really good and why on earth would you go and try to say um, that I'm going to use a, an iron sight AR-15? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, it doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but 
again, you know, oh, that's that, that's what he used, and and uh, yeah, that's uh, he just took aim and he shot, and just you know, if Donald Trump wouldn't have moved his head, he would have hit him. Um, well, I don't really buy into that, to be honest with you. Got a deer fly flying around my camera here. Got him. Um, I don't really buy into that. Uh, again, you know, you could see through my scope on my varmint gun that you could see the jug fairly clearly from 142 yards. And, you know, I didn't take a shot at it because I don't want to waste any ammunition and whatever, but, um, I could hit the jug very easily. Very clear shot. But to, you know, miss him and go through his ear and whatever else, according to the story, um, it just, it makes a bunch of problems for me in my mind, just thinking, okay, you know, have I had close calls with animals like that and whatever, grazing shots and things? Yes, I have. You know, something doesn't go right or they move just at the last second when you go to shoot at them. It's possible, definitely possible. But I think from listening to the thing, there were multiple shots fired. So, uh, you know, again, I showed you the, the video proof of it. You look through the iron sights at 142 yards, you can barely even see this. And the front blade that you have to line up between the two, you know, the little round peephole and the front blade of the sight, that front blade, when you have it on the target, it's basically covering the target. And I'll show you here why I used the thing of buckets with a water jug. Um, I'm just about back to it. Back my one trail here, it's seriously in need of some uh, trail grooming, so to speak. But, see I'm six foot three. I think Trump's six foot something, right around six foot tall or whatever else. But the water jug is about the size of a man's head. And this height here puts it just about my height. I'm a little bit taller than it. But um, that would be about equal. And of course I realize he was up on a raised platform, but still, it would still be 142 yards. Uh, get a little bit better sight picture above everybody that was around, but it still is 142 yards. So, just looking at this whole thing and I'm thinking, mm, nah, I don't really know. It's, you know, the shot that was taken, if it was in fact a shot, there, and it, again, people say, you don't believe that there were any bullets shot. Yes, I do believe that there were bullets shot. But if I was some inexperienced kid having to shoot from way back there, 142 yards to here, um, with an AR-15 and iron sights, just fire off a couple rounds, which is what you heard. You know, maybe three shots or something like that before the counter snipers uh, shot him after watching him take his shots. There's an issue as well there. But um, <clears throat> it just, again, it doesn't make any logical sense to me how just one of the shots, you know, you can just fire from this distance, not see your target, and one of the shots, you know, goes right and passes right by his head, right through his ear, because he turns just at the right moment or something. It just, it just doesn't seem real to me, okay? And, uh, you know, when you understand what um, these politicians, what they will do to control people and whatever else, the lies that they will tell, the false flag operations and, and whatever, uh, that's why I don't trust them. Um, we've had a lot of, you know, things that have been times that they've lied to us. Deer flies. They've lied to us a lot throughout history. And that's why I just, uh, I don't trust them. But let's just go with this thing of the incompetence theory, which I think most people are looking at it and saying, yeah, I think it was a lot of incompetence. Everybody was incompetent, including Trump. You say, how could Trump be incompetent? Well, I'll explain that here. Um, all right, incompetence number one, you have the Secret Service, they go there and they say, let's set up a perimeter around the stage here and pictures of it coming out and it looks like Pac-Man, you know, and they, we just won't cover the buildings over there. Why not? That's a little bit of incompetence there. All right, so you're creating a place where you're not going to care who's up on the building there. Well, that's a bit of an issue. But then you have the local police and they say, well, we're just here to to uh, direct traffic and whatever else. And we'll have these gates here where we can't get through certain gates. And and um, so we'll just kind of, people are telling us 
there's a shooter on the roof and one of the police officers goes up the ladder and the shooter points at him with a gun and he backs down. Okay, and you say, well, how could they be so incompetent? Well, let's just look at our politically correct world and say, maybe the police officer was, a, was afraid of shooting a guy without really understanding what was going on and it would alarm people and there might be other shootings. And so let's just say the guy was completely incompetent. Secret Service was incompetent. The police were incompetent. The shooter was incompetent walking around out there where people could see him for hours beforehand, walking around with a range finder, seeing where he should take his shot from. There's a ladder up against the building. It's all just incompetence, you see. Um, Trump gets shot, goes like this. You see him, he takes his hand down. There's no blood on his fingers. Now, uh, again, I've shot lots of animals over the years as a hunter. It doesn't take real long if you shoot them for blood to be seen okay um is it possible you know there's a lot of cartilage up here in the upper part of the ear maybe it won't bleed that much or something maybe but again how do you line up a shot how do you line up a shot so that it goes through the ear without touching the side of the head that's either some kind of divine intervention which watch out for that one people try to say oh god spared him and whatever else uh, why would God spare a very wicked man like Donald Trump, a man who's a trained Jesuit? I have an issue with that. Um, a man who's going to bring a lot of evil to this nation like he did the first time. And like the Democrats do too, by the way, so don't think I'm just ripping on Republicans. They're both evil. Um, both are tearing down this nation. But it just seems odd to me. You know, either it was just complete dumb coincidence divine intervention or it was faked right there when he went down and was there covered up by the Secret Service people. That's why I suggested, suggested blading. I did not say that that's what they did. Again, if you don't understand what blading is, professional wrestlers would put a little blade inside their wristband and the, you know, the wristbands that they wear, a little razor blade, and then they get hit on the head while they're down and they go like this and they, they'll pull the little razor blade out, cut themselves in the forehead, put the razor blade back in. And then they're bleeding, you know, and then the other guy hits them and the, and the blood goes, splatters around and whatever else. Blading. It's part of the fakeness of professional wrestling, which Donald Trump has been involved with for years. There's lots of clips of him um, wrestling Vince McMahon, um, getting beat up by Stone Cold Steve Austin and all this different stuff. They've been doing this for years. Um, he's an actor. Again. Oh, it wasn't an act. It was the real thing. Well, I have a right to ask questions. I'm an American, and things don't make sense to me. Um, but, you know, the incompetence of Donald Trump. Uh, he's worried about his shoes. You know, uh, you just got shot. Okay, don't worry about your shoes. And I realize people do dumb things in stressful times, but, um, you know, and then he gets up and he's, fight, fight, fight. Fight what? What are we fighting? And the people, like I said in another video, they start chanting, USA, USA. See, you're triggering the emotions of the people into thinking that somehow Donald Trump represents America and America just, Donald Trump was just shot, so America was just shot. And it's the liberals that did it. Or it's uh, um, uh, you know, <laughs> Black Lives Matter or, or the Pride Movement or some other kind. It's, it's not the right way to do things, is what I'm saying. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And then you blame the liberal news media for inciting people to want to do that and all this other stuff. Yeah, come on. Um, all I'm saying is we cannot lose the right to criticize, the right to question. We lost that back in 2020. The pandemic came out and people asked questions. I was one of them. I asked some questions. Oh, some things don't line up and, oh, shut up. We're going to censor your channel. And we still have gotten, haven't gotten our freedom of speech back, even though science has proved some of my objections right. And yet I'm still not allowed to talk about it. And, you know, I've seen people in there suggesting deporting anybody that would uh, question the official story of Donald Trump. And, you know, and oh, what about the innocent people who died? Sure, you get from that distance there, the whole way back there, 142 yards, you get some young guy, hey, try to hit the president from there. Okay, you know, shoots three times or whatever else before they take him out. Yeah, there were other bullets. There were real bullets going around. 
but there's you know stories of other shooters now in the water tower and other things around people hearing shots coming from different areas and um, kind of funny too because uh, you had the Kennedy assassination years ago Lee Harvey Oswald up in the Texas book school book depository and he shoots from an up upper window shoots Kennedy in the back of the neck it comes out of the front of his neck goes into Governor Connolly down through and comes out of his leg or something like this the magic bullet theory and then they find the bullet undeformed on the hospital bed year, later on when Connolly's in the hospital the magic bullet theory um, I think we're dealing with some more magic bullets here magic ballistics where you can shoot 142 yards back and hit a man-sized target with iron sights on an AR-15 and an untrained young man. They probably played video games a lot, so that's his training. Uh, I don't think so. That's not real world. That's not real training. But um, it just stinks. It stinks. And look at the bigger, the broader picture here. What's it really about? It's about censoring speech. That's what it's really about. Don't question the official narrative. Don't question what happened. If you do, you should be deported. You're not a real American. You're not a conservative or something like this. Uh, no, actually me questioning proves that I'm conservative, proves that I'm a real American. So, just wanted to put together this video just to show the absurdity, absurdity of this whole thing. Why, right away I just thought, what? No. <laughs> um, I mean, even if, like I said, even if, you know, in basic criminology, okay, you have to get into the mind of the criminal. How would I recreate this crime? What would I do if I was the criminal? Okay, if you're the bad guy and you have to shoot a 142 yard shot, what would you use? Okay, which one would you use? Scoped rifle or an AR-15 with iron sights? I think we know which one you would choose if you had any brains at all. So be careful what you see out there. Be careful what you're watching. Um, uh, both men, Biden or Trump, they both would be bad for this country. Uh, we need to have uh, real politicians that are, that are accountable to the rule of law and not to what the majority thinks and the opinions and we can sway them with Hollywood-like productions and, and vitriolic speech at debates and, and attitudes and going around and getting in fights and MAGAs versus pride people or leftist people or liberals. That's not what's going to fix this country. Uh, this circus that the these people are putting on, it's not good for the American people and it's not good for America. Thank you for watching.